Hello and welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. I am Ludwig Brutmann and in this video I will present feature importance methods for random forests. The basic goal will be to uh, get a measure on how important different features are. So here on the left hand side, for example, the features of the MCARS dataset and the higher value here means that this feature is very important. So at the end of this uh, video you should understand what the goal of feature importance is, of course, so enhancing the interpretability of random forests. And I will present two different methods of computing feature importance methods, namely permutation of feature importance and feature importance based on improvements in split. So we will start with the permutation feature importance. A good thing about random forests is that it improves the predictive performance of those individual decision trees by combining them, but the downside is that we lose interpretability. Feature importance tries to mitigate this problem. The basic question that we ask ourselves in permutation feature importance is how much the performance decreases if a feature is removed or rendered useless. So here in this visualization here we just ignore or delete the feature column length which is I hope okay as an intuition but the permutation feature importance does not really delete this column but it permutes the entries of this column. The goal is to remove the associations between this feature and the target variable but to remain the marginal distribution of this feature length. So what we will do is that we yeah, randomly permute values of this column here which keeps the marginal distribution as it was before. And then we can obtain uh, an estimate for generalization error of this random forest with the permuted features and without permuting the features by predicting OB data. So it's efficiently, uh, it's very efficient to compute this feature importance during training because first we avoid training new models. So imagine you really would delete the entire column length. Then the model you've tra trained before is no longer valid. So you have to train new models uh, with one column less. That's of course computationally rather intensive. And uh, we can again use uh, this OOB principle to use those OOB observations as test data points. Here you have the pseudocode and a hopeful, helpful visualization of this. Let's go through this algorithm together. The very first thing you do is that you calculate the generalization error, the OOB generalization error, using some set-based metric rho on the original data. Okay, so before permuting anything, you just take your data as you have it before and estimate the generalization error for this then the permutation starts. So in the second so in the second step we iterate through all the features and let's say we just take one feature for now x1 for example then we do the following we ignore this third line for a second and I will come back to this uh, later. So we take feature x j for example here length and we distort the feature target relation by permuting xj. So what you see here from left to right is that the column length was permuted. So on the left hand side you have 10, 11, 19, 14, on the right hand side 11, 19, 14, 10. Yeah? But it's just this one column that gets permuted. All the other features which you don't see and the target variable which banana is not permuted. Okay, so you just permute the first column here. Of course you do this for all the bootstrap samples but yeah <clears throat> you basically permute the original data so you, the bootstrap sampling is a step after that. Then you compute all the OOB, OOB predictions for the permuted feature data. So the f hat i subscript OOB subscript psi j okay so don't worry about all these subscripts here this just means that it's the predicted value for the ith observation when permuting feature j 
Okay, it's just a prediction for this observation i. You do this for all n observations and arrange these, these predictions in f hat for o b psi j for the j feature. And then with these predictions, what you can do is you just compare the predictions with the true values. Okay, so for example, here at the top, you have on the, yeah, you just have these predictions here, H hat for example, so the OB, OOB prediction for, for this first tree would be would be no. You do this of course for for all the trees as you've seen in the OOB error prediction chunk. And use some set based metric, whichever you prefer, to compare the true labels Y with the predicted target value target values F hat J to compute or to estimate some generalization error. <clears throat> so then you have G E hat of O O B J and in the next step you take the difference between this generalization error which kind of evaluates how good this model with a permuted feature performs on new unseen test data and compare it with what you have computed in the very first step the OB error of the data set without permuting any features. Okay? And if you permute the features, of course the model should get worse. So the GE, this thing G hat OOBJ will be larger, so you have a larger error. So the F hat I, F hat, sorry, F I hat J, the estimated feature importances for feature J will be positive. Okay, so far so good, I hope. Let's now return to this third line here. As I said before, I'll skip that for a moment. The reason why we have to do this several, oh, we have to do this several times, first of all, fact. The reason why we do this is that it's a random process, right? So if you permute features, if you do this several times, the, the concrete values after a permutation will be different. So we can be more or less lucky in these iterations and to, to cancel out any randomness going on, we have to do this several times. Okay, so not just once, do this 100 times, for example. So this step here, permutation of feature length has to be done not once, but several times. Which means that you get not only one estimated feature importance for feature J, but more of them, let's say 100, okay? And in the end, you take all these 100 values and average over them to get a final feature and permutation feature importance for feature J. An alternative to permutation feature importance is impurity importance. What happens here is that you add up all the improvements and splits for feature X J is used. How does that work? Let's say we take feature J, <clears throat> then first of all we go through all the trained models B hat M. Let's say we start with the first one here. We find all splits which used XJ as splitting variable. Here we have two splits that used XJ for splitting and we extract the improvement or the risk reduction for these splits. So these plus plus i here mean that yeah, plus plus i is a good uh, improvement, plus i is not is also okay but not that much and plus 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 i is a very good improvement. Okay, so it's very hand wavy here. This just stands for the fact that different splits can lead to different risk reductions or different improvements. Then we sum everything up do this for all the trees of course so in the end we add up all the improvements over all trees for getting this feature importance of feature J. Some final remarks here so let's first of all compare the two alternatives permutation feature importance and impurity based feature importance on the right hand side we have permutation feature importance, you see the increase of the mean squared error for the MCARS data set for all these features. On the left hand side, impurity importance using the Gini impurity 
for the same data set for the same features. And if you compare left to right, well, more or less, it's the same, right? Not the values on the x-axis themselves, but don't ever compare, I don't know, Gini impurity with permutation, feature importance, the absolute numbers, doesn't make sense. Choose one of the feature importances and then compare those numbers, that's okay. But if you just look at the, the relative uh, importance, let's say, it's more or less the same. So the order changes, the first two features the first most important features seem to be DISP and WT, but then on the left hand side you have HP as third most important feature and CYL on the right hand side. But then they come on fourth place. So uh, take home message here is basically they are not that, that different. Okay. Um, one, one caveat, both methods are biased towards features with more levels. So if you, for example, have categorical features with many categories, uh, they tend to get higher um, feature importance values in both methods. And small outlook, uh, there are more advanced versions um, and most of all these uh, permutation feature and impurity feature importance can be generalized, uh, were generalized. Uh, we have a whole, uh, total lecture on inter interpretable machine learning where we have a lot of uh, sections here on the details of all these feature importance measures and also on other feature importance measures that have been proposed in the literature.